It's happened! The Texas Rangers win the World Series! When the season ends, is baseball really over? Of course not. It's early morning practices. It's pickup games, whenever and wherever. It's the anticipation for the game today and the crack of the bat tomorrow. It's history. And it's groundbreaking. It's a dream that becomes a reality. It's believing through all the stops along the way to the journey home. When it's in your DNA, it's always time to play ball. New York. I don't think you can describe it. I think you just have to experience it. I love the fans the most. They're very knowledgeable about the game. They have high expectations, and they hold you accountable. The greatest fans in the world. Yankee Stadium, the house that Babe Ruth built. My grandmother was a huge Yankee fan. The Yankees were my favorite team, and I always wanted to be a shortstop because my dad was a shortstop. So as far back as my mind allows me to go, that's how long I wanted to play baseball. Yankee select Derek Jeter. You know, you put the pinstripes on for the first time and you're taking the field as a member of the New York Yankees. And this is what you work for. All eyes are on you. It's like I was living a dream. Welcome to the show. first got the call in 1995 that I was getting promoted to the major leagues, I thought for sure I was getting traded. My name was circulating a lot of trade rumors, and I got a call probably at 5.30 in the morning from my manager at the time, and he is asking me if I was awake, and I was like, no, I'm not awake. And he said, well, splash some water on your face and come to your room. And he came to my room, and he told me I had been promoted to New York, and I was on a flight to Seattle and a couple hours later. Going to play in the King Dome, never played in the Dome before. Just, you know, having a moment where you say, look, I've, I've made it, I've finally been called up to the major league. So it's definitely a moment that I will never, never forget. The second for one, Jeter the strong throw, wow. You know, I was 0 for 5 the night before. You start thinking about whether or not you're gonna be sent back down to the minor leagues. You're putting a lot of pressure on yourself. Here's the kid, Derek Jeter, hunting for his first major league hit and sends a base hit into left. Tino Martinez was the first baseman, and he was, became a teammate of mine the following year and one of my good friends. And when I was going back to the first, he said, congratulations, just the first of many. There was no celebration after the game. I mean, I, I think I smiled for a second. You make it to the major leagues, you're just trying to stay there. So you really don't have much time to celebrate. Diving, stop it, short Derek Jeter. Late in the season, 1995, really hadn't played since I got called back up. The Yankees hadn't been to the postseason since 81, I believe. It was the first year of the wild card, and we were in it. Bernie Williams missed a flight coming back from Puerto Rico, and I think they were pretty much stuck with me playing. The rookie Derek Jeter in a start in a very important ball game. 
So I went out there, I, I hit a double. Jeter sends one toward the gap, deep to right field. The Yankees are going to score a two-out run. Well, how about that? Derek Jeter making the most of this chance. Bernie returned, I think, about the third, fourth inning when he finally got to the park, and we were in the middle of a pennant race. But honestly, I don't think the younger players were trusted, and rightfully so. So as soon as Bernie came, they took me out. I was happy to be able to contribute at least one at bat during that pennant run there. We were battling up until the last day of the season. Pretty much had to win the last game to get to the postseason. And Everyone wanted to get there because it would have been Don Manley's first year in the playoffs. Mattingly rips one down the line and deep. A home run for Don Mattingly in the game that could send him to the first postseason of his 12-year career. We were able to get there. I was not on the playoff roster. I had a chance to stick around so I could see what the atmosphere, the playoff atmosphere was like. The energy, the fans, the intensity of the playoff game. I felt like I just had a good seat to watch. I mean, it was a great seat right in the front row, but not having an opportunity to play or not having the chance to play, it was frustrating because you want to help. Line drive, we are tied. Griffey is coming around. He's going to try to score. Here's the division championship. No one is winning. No one is winning. You know, the ultimate goal is to win a World Series. When that does not happen, I think you sit down and you have a self-evaluation and you flecked on the season and how you can be better and how you can help the team win. I mean, everyone at some point is going to fail and they're going to lose as well, but I think it just motivates you and pushes you into the next season. So, you know, I wanted to prove to myself that I could be on that field and perform and play in the postseason. I remember in 1996, I struggled in spring training. I didn't hit very well. I made a lot of errors, made a lot of mistakes, physical mistakes, mental mistakes. Tony Fernandez was a shortstop before I got there, and he broke his arm with like a couple weeks left in spring training. If he did not break his arm, I felt as though they were going to send me back down to the minor leagues. It was nerve wracking, and I put a lot of pressure on myself to perform, and honestly, I think they were just stuck with me. On my first opening day, we actually got snowed out. We played on the off day the next day. Derek Jeter batting for the first time. You want to make a good impression. You want to get off to a good start. You want to prove to people that you deserve to be there. More importantly, you want to prove to yourself that you deserve to be there. Oh, you got to run on that one. That's gone. Holy cow. The season sort of took off from there. In the shallow center field. What a play, Derek Jeter made. I felt as though it was very important for me, especially looking back now, that I got off to a good start. Even though it was just one game, that adds to your confidence. When I'm up in a big situation, my mind would always go back to a successful time in my career, whether it was in Little League or it was in the minor leagues or the major leagues. With an RBI single. I had fun, and I tried to enjoy the moment and I always thought I was going to be successful. Now, I would fail a lot, but my mind just went to the times I had success. <laughs> Playing in the playoffs, the fans were hungry. We were the talk of the town. The Yankees have left 10 men on base, including the bases loaded in the seventh. Going back to the track, to the wall. No matter how you look at it, it was a home run. Right, there's nothing you can say about it. And what happens here? It's a home run. Jeter comes across to tie the game. Tony Tarasco actually played for us, and I told Tony, you should have jumped. He didn't jump. He wasn't going to catch it anyway. People made a big deal out of it. Obviously, I, I understand it now, but we would have beat Baltimore anyway. You know, that just tied it. Bernie actually won the game later on. And here's a drive to left. It's mighty high. It's one of those moments that, you know, in order to win a World Series, you have to have a good team, you have to have a great team, but you also need breaks. And can't say we got all the breaks, we earned our breaks. Just one of those moments that worked out for us.
core four, myself, Jorge Posada, Mariano Rivera, and Andy Pettit. Back with the pitch and it's strikeout number one. Now we got the nickname of the core four after we won in 2009 because we were the only four that had won championships prior to. When they first saw his name, is, is it Andy Petit? <laughs> and everyone knows his name now, and everyone knows how well he can pitch. And that time he did get him. Andy Pettit is probably one of the nicest human beings you'll ever meet. I consider him a brother. He's someone I've played with since I was 18 years old. He's a big game pitcher. He always seemed to step up when our team needed the most. What a start he is at, striking out the first two batters. He seemed to be the guy that after we would lose a big game, he's the guy's pitching the next day. Now Jones back to Pettit. You want more poise? One, four, three. Inning over, and the Yankees hold on to the lead. You had the utmost confidence in him every time he stepped on the mound. You knew the moment wasn't going to overwhelm him. Got McGuire. We were all very comfortable with him on the mound in big games. I remember when we played Atlanta in the World Series, all I knew about the Braves was watching them on television when I was younger. The moment I really realized that it was the World Series is when Mr. Torrey came in to our meeting and he said, this team's gonna be better than any team you've played this year. And this was before interleague play, so we never played the Braves. The sellout crowd is on hand to watch the Braves and the New York Yankees. You're facing Maddox and Glavin and Smoltz and Avery, Fred McGriff, Chipper Jones. I've never been around these guys. I just watched them and admired them from afar. It was a stacked team. I realized we're in the World Series now. I was the one that said, if you don't win the World Series, the season's a failure. The 1996 World Series. It's a culmination of a lot of hard work when you win finally in 1996, for the first time. You go back to playing in Little League, playing in summer ball, playing in high school, all the years in the minor leagues, the success, the failures. You play for that one moment to be the last team on the field. It's pretty special, pretty special, especially when you have a chance to do it in New York. And the New York Yankees are world Champions. New York's a hot spot. If you have success there, the people show up. They pay attention. They watch. They want to be a part of it. So it was experiencing everything for the first time. This is incredible. Once you win, there's no other place you can go. You either win or you fail. So it set the expectation level high. It set the bar high for us. And that's what we always strive to do, was to win a World Series. And I think that started because we were able to win in 1996. Jeter O'Neill and Martinez, the runners. Jumped on that one. Hit deep to right. A grand slam home run for Bernie Williams. His first as a left-hand hitter this year. Wow. What made the 1998 team unique was we could care less what we did the day before. We could care less who the hero was. We pretty much clinched the division in April. I mean, it was, for the most part, it was over with. And the New York Yankees are the champions of the American League East Division. Whether it was moving a runner over, you hit a home run, you bunt a guy over, it didn't make a difference. Everyone was willing to do it. We checked our egos at the door. You know, just every single day, we wanted to beat you. The only thing we cared about was winning. Derek Jeter rips it inside the line, and he's going to have a standing double. Yep, 200 hit. 200 hits, I mean, it's a couple of things. One, consistency. You have to be consistent day in and day out. And you have to play. You have to be available. You can't take days off. Home runs fluctuate, RBIs fluctuate, average fluctuates. But you only get a two, three people maybe at most in each league that gets 200 hits. The souvenir for Derek Jeter. First time in his career, 200 hits in a season. I started working on the jump throw in the minor leagues, just having fun during batting practice. I just think it came from years of sort of improvising. The ball's got to be hit the right speed. You got to know the speed of the runner. 
and you gotta have fun when you play. I had fun. So first time people maybe really paid attention to it was when we were playing Cleveland in the playoffs. Hit toward the hole, Jeter backhands from the outfield grass. Man, what a play! For me, I didn't think about it. It was just a reaction. It was easier and quicker for me to just jump as opposed to stopping and trying to play it. If you work on something enough and you do it over and over and over again, it just becomes a, a natural play for you. I mean, that is about the strength right there. I'm not patting myself on the back. I'm really not. It's not as easy as it looks because if you actually, when you take people out to a major league field and you see how far the throw is, you have to have momentum on your side. I think the reaction, initial reaction was, when did you start doing that? I mean, this is a beautiful play. I don't know how many shortstops can make that play. Now Jeter to the right side, under the glove of Varis. No throw, and it's 4-0 Yankees in the second. What does it take for a team to sweep the World Series? Martinez down the I think it takes a confident team. I think it takes a very, very good team. I think it takes an experienced group. And I think it takes a group that never gives up, whether you're behind or not. And the 98 team had all those qualities. And to center field, well hit. At the track, at the wall. A three-run home run for Scott Brocious. And just like that, the Yankees take a in 98 I wouldn't say it's a feeling of relief it was a feeling of satisfaction it was a feeling of this is where we belong this is where we should be and then right after that is we have to win again next year Brocious, fittingly with a three and the Yankees have done it again number 24 they are the world champions of baseball in 1998 good teams they don't sit around and pat themselves on the back and talk about what they've accomplished they think about what's next our group always thought about the next year. I mean, guys weren't walking around wearing World Series rings into the clubhouse because that didn't mean anything to us anymore. It was now, what can we do next? Yankees win! The Yankees win! For a lot of teams, there's a natural letdown because you've reached your goal, you've reached the peak, you've won the World Series or you won a championship, you sort of get a chance to exhale and relax. I think what made our group special was we never did that. And it's gone! And the Yankees have won it. Go! What a finish! 1999 knows it. We have to win the World Series. We have to win back-to-back, -back, or we've wasted our time. When you're talking about 40-man roster, you're talking about 40 people all having that same mindset. It's pretty special and we had a special group. And the Yankees are gonna win the game! I had 100 RBIs for the first time that year. It's the only time I had 100 RBIs. It falls in for a hit, bounces into the stands for a double. Derek Jeter has his 100th RBI, and for Jeter, it's his first time to the 100 RBI club. We had to win. It's a lot of pressure that we put on ourselves, but we welcomed it. What made 99 against Boston in the postseason so special was up until that point, we'd never played in the postseason. Swung on him, blooped to right field, and the Yankees have tied the game at three. A home run, and the Yankees win over their arch rival Red Sox. I'm biased. I think it's the best rivalry in all of sports. It is gone. Rivera set. The pitch. Struck him out swinging. Yankees win. We felt as though we couldn't lose. There was a lot of pressure on us that we just can't lose this series. I personally did not like playing at Fenway Park. You ever strike out, it's the longest walk in Major League Baseball. That's strikeout number six. Jeter says goodbye as that's 10 strikeouts for Pedro Martinez. I like the atmosphere, but I didn't necessarily like playing at Fenway Park. Jeter pounds one into center field. Back is Lewis at the wall and gone for a two-run home run. To have a big moment against Boston, I think it stands out a little bit more. Not only in my mind, I think it stands out in the minds 
of the fans as well. Ball game over. American League Championship Series over. Yankees win. The Yankees win. I don't think they didn't want to win it in Boston. They certainly did. There's two sides of it. You always like to clinch at home so you can do it in front of your home fans. But then at the same time, you play in Boston, you love clinching in Boston. Big night here in New York. Mariano Rivera. Mariano was just always calm. The young right-hander Mariano Rivera making his major league debut. And Rivera has entered the big leagues. Didn't make a difference if it was spring training game, game seven of the World Series. Rivera is set, swung on and popped up off third. Ball game over. He had the same demeanor. Looked like nothing bothered him. You knew what he was going to throw. He wasn't trying to trick you. He wasn't trying to fool you. He broke three bats in that trip to the plate. And he's a big reason why we were able to win all those championships. These fans are the best of the world. I thank God for them because, I mean, these fans are number one. I love you guys. Thank you very much. Parker. Batting second from the New York Yankees. Playing shortstop, Derek Jeter. I remember it was the first time I had a chance to start the All-Star game. So you're excited about that. A line at the left. It'll drop for a hit. Down the line. Possible extra bases. Jeter is in standing. I was able to get a few hits and score a run. Here's Jeter who doubled his first time up. It's one through the middle, and Jeter's two for two. A line drive, and he's three for three. One run home. Jeter has knocked in two and scored the other. You got to come up at the right time. I had zero idea that no Yankee had ever won All-Star Game MVP. It's mind-boggling to me to think all the great players that have played Yankee uniform. You've had a great career, and this is just another great moment. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. There's a long history there, so you had to be the first to do anything in Yankee uniform. is tough to do. It's a shortstop position in the American League. You never know if you're going to get a chance to come to an All-Star game, let alone start with him. So you know, I'm just thankful I got an opportunity to play. A slow roller, but Martinez doesn't run well. Jeter up with it. Start spreading the news. New York, New York. Now the stage is set for the Subway Series between the Yankees and Mets. The hype around the Subway Series in 2000 was second to none. I think New York was the center of the baseball world. We had heard so much about how good the Mets were. Grand slam, Piazza! They were close the year before, and then everywhere you went in New York, that's all people talked about. You'd run into Mets fans telling us how bad we were. Yankee fans don't blow it. If there's any series that you can't lose, it's one against the Mets. We were the talk of the town. Gio into left field, well hit. You hear athletes say all the time, game speeds up, it slows down. It slows down when you're prepared. Track wall off the top of the wall. So I knew how fast he was. I saw he wasn't really running that hard because I think he thought it was going to be a home run as well. In my mind, it was if Justice could give me the ball as soon as possible, we have a chance to get him at the plate. Into third, they bring him around. Throw to the plate by Jeter. Great throw. Inning over. Derek Jeter with a relay throw to end the inning. You talk about the jump throw. That was a relay throw where I was on the move. I didn't stop. Right on the money, an off-balance throw. Wow. I think that was a big moment in the series because, you know, they were feeling themselves at the time. <laughs> Jeter moves into the leadoff spot as both clubs have struggled to get their leadoff men on base in this series. Where I hit in the lineup didn't change my approach at all, whether I hit first, second, third. Every single at bat in my career, I looked fastball right down the middle. I just wasn't good enough to guess. When I was leading off, he threw a first pitch fastball and I was able to hit it out. 
And he goes after the first pitch, way back left field, Derek Jeter, he's on and out! Goodbye, home run! First pitch homer for Derek Jeter! There's more outside pressure for us to win that series than there was any other World Series, because in New York, it almost felt as though the city was up for grabs. That's well hit into left field by Tyler. On Bayani back, it's a 2-2 game. Derek Jeter's going deep again. Up the middle. Then he's hit it. Throw to the plate. Hits the runner. Brocious will score, and the Yankees lead 4-2. If we didn't win that World Series, it would have been, we would have been in a lot of trouble. A three-peat. The New York Yankees for the third time in a row, fourth time in five years, and 26th time in franchise history. They are the world champions. I don't know if I can describe what it feels like to be on top of the sports world in New York. When we are playing, it's like we're performing on a Broadway stage and everyone came to see us because we were winning and we were successful. We had a run there where there was a lot of celebrating. Posada was my closest teammate. I was with him every single day for the 17 years we played together in New York. Came up in the minor leagues together. Posada with his first home run. My oldest daughter and him share a birthday. Him and his wife are godparents to my oldest. Jorge's closest teammate that I've had. You play with teammates like Andy Pettit, Jorge Posada, Mariano Rivera for so long. It's like you already know what each other are thinking. You know, you don't even have to say certain things because you didn't have to worry about those guys being prepared. Posada swings away and hits a deep to left. You didn't have to worry about them being overwhelmed by any situation. You didn't have to worry about what their number one priority was. You didn't have to convince them that it was important. Posada hangs on. I mean, these are guys that, you know, be brothers for life. 